Okay, everybody, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite characters in world history, the Emperor Shi Di of China. He is considered the first emperor. Um, not sure if he's really the first, because obviously we've had some dynasties that we've already talked about before him, but he is the first real big name on uh, the horizon, okay? Uh, this guy is a great builder. He is a brutal ruler, a great warrior. Um, just an all-around really interesting character. Um, he is the character, as you can see here from the movie, with the picture of Jet Li riding on his horse. Um, this is from the movie The Mummy, uh, the third episode, I think it is, The Dragon Emperor. And Shi Wang Di is depicted um, in this uh, movie. So, a little bit on him and how he came to power. Okay. At the end of the period of the warring states that we've talked somewhat about, when all the philosophies of Confucianism and everything developed, a um, guy comes on the scene. Um, his name is Zheng. Okay. Uh, he's born in 259 BC, northwest China, in the state of what is, pr uh, is pronounced Qin. Even though it's said Q-I-N, it's pronounced Qin. Most fathers, uh, scholars believe his father was an ambitious merchant, his mother a concubine of the king of Qin. But the king believes that Zheng is his biological son, and he makes him the heir to the throne. When Zhang turns 13, he becomes the king of the Qin. Okay? Over the course of the next 25 years, he conquers all of the warring states of Central East Asia and creates China's first united empire. And that's why they really call him the first emperor, because he's the first one to really bring all of the different Chinese factions under one group. Okay? So, a little more. Uh, so during this period of the Warring States, you had the Qin, the Chu, the Han, the Wei, the Zhao, the Yan, and the Hui. Okay, um, All of these different groups are basically run by warlords, all of their own king, and they're all constantly fighting against each other. Okay, Shi Wang Di is the guy who brings it all together. Um, and we'll get into how he does that in class uh, next week. So after his conquests, okay, after he conquers China, he declares himself first emperor and he adopts the name of Xin Shi Wang Di. Qin is from the name of his territory, where he's from. Um, Shi Wang Di translates roughly to first August emperor. And August simply means awe-inspiring. So obviously he was a little full of himself. And when you get to see some of the projects he engaged in and some of the ways he ruled, um, you'll probably get a good understanding of him. Okay, by most accounts, um, Emperor Qin, sometimes referred to as the Tiger of Qin, was a strict and enormously powerful leader with a commanding presence. Okay, one advisor described the emperor as having all-seeing eyes. His chest is like that of a bird of prey and his voice like that of a jackal. He's merciless with the heart of a tiger or a wolf. Oftentimes, great leaders have supernatural powers attributed to them. And a lot of the reason he's all-seeing and all this other stuff is he probably was an impressive physical specimen, but he also had a secret police force that kept him informed. And he ruled very much through terror. Okay, um, He has a profound influence on Chinese society. He totally remakes China. And we'll see some of the ways he did that um, when we get into him in a little more detail in class next week. Despite the country's vast size, China is bigger than the United States, and it has a lot of regional differences, as we've already looked at with the geography. Shi Di manages to unify all aspects of their culture, be it the laws, the currency, the writing system. He does stuff like standardized cart axle sizes so that all the carts can ride on the road. He standardizes the money. He standardizes the legal system. And he, most importantly, his most famous contribution is the beginning of the construction of the Great Wall of China. Okay, So in addition to this line of emperors started by Shi Wangdi, um, they last, all the, he's the first of the dynasties that pretty much go all the way to the 25th, 20th century, to 1911 when the, the thing finally falls apart. They can plot their lineage back through time to Shi Wangdi. Okay, China eventually gets its name from the Qin dynasty, as we saw in the John Green movie. Chin is, is pronounced C-H-I-N, and you add an, N, an A on the end, and it becomes China. Um, even though this dynasty is extremely powerful after, during his, his time on the throne, it collapses within minutes, practically, uh, over the course of history, of Shi Wangdi's death in 210. Okay? He rules 
for from the time he takes power in the in the in the kingdom of Chen till his death for about 28 years. Okay, so over this lifetime, he unifies all of China and he rules as the emperor of China for about 11 years from 221 till 210 when he dies. But the thing quickly goes in the dumper after he dies. Okay, story of his life has often been distorted by based, biased historical writings. And a lot of that was the, uh, the doings of the Han who came after him. They painted him as a bad ruler and therefore they could... Uh, give the reason for gaining, gaining the mandate of heaven, and therefore, um, you know, they had to tell the story to make themselves look good. Okay, accounts were written during his lifetime were often uncritical odes to his greatness. Okay, he was a, t uh, a leader who ruled through fear and intimidation, so obviously nobody's going to write anything bad about him while he's king. But other better-known accounts of his life were written later by ancient Chinese scho scholars who violently disagree with his style of government written by Confucian style, uh, scholars, okay? Chi Wang Di, as I've said before in class, is a legalist, okay? He believes in harsh rule. The Confucianists who come in the Han Dynasty, the next dynasty, don't see it that way, and so they criticize a lot of the way Chi Wang Di ruled, okay? Famous essay is entitled, The Sins of the Chin, declared that the emperor placed deceit and violence above kindness and justice, making tyranny and the, found, the foundation of his empire. And this is, to some extent, very true. Um, as you'll see when we talk about how the Great Wall was built and then the building of Shi Di's great tomb. Okay? Um, nowadays, he's seen in a much more balanced way. Um, he's seen as a conqueror, a unifier, a centralizer, a standardizer, a builder, but he's also seen as a destroyer. He did an awful lot of good, but he also did a fair amount of bad. Okay, so hopefully you've taken some notes from this. Okay, as your homework sheet says, you're going to have a quiz Monday morning, the first, when we get back from Thanksgiving break, on the, the Qin Dynasty. Um, you need to answer these questions by Monday also as part of your notes. First of all, how does he gain the mandate of heaven? How does the Qin, di Qin Dynasty unify China? and list some of the policies and achievements of the Emperor Shi Di in unifying northern China under the Qin Dynasty. That's all for now. We'll see you later.